Amen. Welcome to Wednesday service. If you're able to stand with us and turn in your hymn books to page 256, 256. Are you washed in the blood? Amen. Amen. On that first, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this time? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? of the land will your souls be ready for the mansion right are you washed in the blood of the land are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the land are your garments spotless are they white as snow are you washed in the blood of the land amen lift it up I hope that's your testimony. Give all praises unto the Lord. Here we go. Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Jerry, would you open us up in a word of prayer? Amen. Please be seated. Thank you for that prayer, brother. Just a few pages over. 252. There is power in the blood. Amen.
Office Church. Thanks for coming out for Wednesday night, and i um, just like to thank you for all the gifts for uh, my birthday. What a wonderful thing. It was just overwhelming, and the card and the, and the gift from the church. Thank you so much, everybody, for all the different gifts you've given me. Appreciate that, and, uh, but anyways, everybody's texting me, all my family's texting me through the day, happy birthday, Dad, wish I could be there with you. Are you, are you sure? I'm in the truck driving down the road, you know, going, no. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was good. But uh, it was a blessing, amen. So thank you so much. And uh, but anyways, uh, well, I don't know about deserve, but you know, <laughs> if I got what I deserve, you know. All right. Hopefully you got a a a, a, a prayer list. And um, if you didn't get a prayer list, we'd like to try to get one out to you. Mackenzie needs one over there. If you don't mind, uh, somebody grabbing one. A couple more. A couple more over there. Anybody else? Just raise your hand. We'll get you one to you. And we got Mrs. Carroll up here needs one. And so, yeah. So, um, Speaker of the House, his name is Mike Johnson, correct? Yes. Okay, we need to pray for him. He seems to be like bullseye right now. Uh, it just seems like, you know, when you do the right thing, you know, they make it look like, you know, you're, how terrible you are, you know. So, uh, anyways. We need to pray for him, and we need to certainly pray for our government officials, things like that. So, anyways, pray for Fanita. She's still in the Philippines, I think. Is that right? Yes. Still there. Okay. Another two. Wow, two weeks more? Man. Okay. Well, we'll keep praying. And then uh, anybody else you'd like to have a prayer, prayer request? What's that? Oh, teen room. Teen, teens are dismissed. And then uh, Audrey. What's her name? Jeannie. So pray for Jeannie. And you say 20 years? Okay. Um, okay. So pray for Jeannie. Uh, and if we need to pray for Megan. Got to help her with her health. She had an episode Wednesday, uh, Sunday night. We'll pray for her. We've been praying for her. So also pray for Karen, Tommy, and uh, Mary, I believe. I, we haven't seen them because they're sick, you know, so they're staying away. But just pray that God will help them get over their sickness if you would. Pray for Lou, Brother Lou, Brother Daryl and Joyce. Anybody else have a prayer list or something they would like to add? Uh, Pastor? be praying for Bible Baptist Church Piel if you would that'd be good all right and uh, anybody else yes I'm sorry I had Terry brother Terry Paul hospice see see what happens you get better care than you thought yeah okay pray for Paul and pray for Kim all right if you would um, Priscilla
dry. Why would we need it dry for? Who would ever think it'd rain around here, huh? No? No? Yes. Okay, Justina's having a tough time getting church days off. So I pray for her schedule. You know, it's one of those things where they go, well, you're new, and you know, you don't get a lot of choices. Um, so hopefully the Lord will work that out, you know what I mean? So that'd be good. Anyway, anyone, anyone else? Yes, Heather. Julissa. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Yes. What? What's his name? Andalini. Is it? It's a guy or a boy? Okay, Andalini. So Adelini, bone cancer, we need to pray. All right, yeah, brother. He's sick. Got something. Okay. So he needs salvation too. So salvation, that's good. Give him the gospel, that's good. Yes. How? Oh, Brady. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I he still has cancer, but yeah, I don't know. So, yeah. Yes. Church, okay. Sherry, all right. Yeah, I want to. I almost put cherry. You know, sherry. Okay. All right. And yes. The will of God. Yeah. Well, we're we're also broken world too. It's like <laughs> there's only. So it starts with Christians being in the will of God, right? So that where that's where it starts, and then so but we can pray for that. All right, anybody else? All the way back, Mackenzie. Complications for Mackenzie. Okay. Pregnancy. be a Baptist pen. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Norma. Oh, good. Oh, okay. Sometimes you know you're doing bad when you got to take someone to the mercy room because you don't want to go. You know, it's like... <laughs> But sometimes you do, I'm telling you. So, anyway, it's good to hear that you're doing better, Frank. Uh, any, yeah, Darla? So, pray for Mike. Come to church, right? Okay. Pray for my pen to write. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay, I think we got everything. Uh, I, I've got one. I think, well, I think it is working. I got a secondary one up here, too. I'm just reluctant. To use this one. This is a Lutheran pen. No, just kidding. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, so uh, we need to pray for more building space. We certainly need to pray. pray we're going to pray for Bible Baptist Church Piala. Uh, and we're praying. Let's see here. And then uh, we just want to make sure we're kind of covering. Anything online, uh, Brother Leon? Do you, can, can you check that? Nothing on there. Okay. Just want to make sure. And uh, okay, let's have a word of prayer.
Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come before you. We thank you, God, for uh, your rich mercies, your goodness, Lord, towards us. Lord, we just come before you and thank you, God, for, uh, Lord, another day to serve you, God, even when it's raining, even when it's gloomy. We thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord, that we have the opportunity to live uh, for you and help us, Lord God, that we would live for you. That you would just bless each and every one of us, that we would live within your will. Uh, God, that you just work in a special way within our world, and that, Lord, that this is so out of, out of whack, it seems like. Everything seems to be going in different directions. And God, we just pray, Lord, we know that you have your perfect will. Uh, it's being done even in the background. You're in control of everything. We thank you, God, how you are. We know, Lord, that this world uh, is eventually going to get judged, and it is being judged even now. And I just pray that you just intervene in a special way within our lives, God, that we would be um, uh, heartbroken, that we would uh, be desirous to uh, share the gospel that we would have that opportunity, that we would take advantage of that opportunity. I pray, Father, Lord Jesus, Lord, for uh, I pray for our Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, God, that you give him grace and strength and help, uh, wisdom, Lord, to make the right choices, God. We know, Lord, that uh, making the right choices is not always easy. I pray, Father, Lord Jesus, Lord, for Israel, that you would hedge up Israel. They're getting a lot of pushback from doing what they need. They know they need to do after what happened. I pray that you just help, Lord, to uh, accomplish that, Lord God, that there'd be a uh, few casualties on both sides, Lord, that you just work through that, Lord, also, Lord, for the sake of the gospel, Lord, people would f come to know you as Savior, Lord, and they'd realize uh, that the, uh, that you uh, do care for them, and that you you went to the cross for them, and you died for them, and you, you were put into the tomb, and three days later, you rose again. We thank you, God, for the gospel. I pray, Father, for the wedding day, that you bless that, bless, uh, pray that you bless uh, that wedding day coming up down the road, Lord God, and uh, I just pray that you would just help, Lord, to be dry. I pray that it would work out well, and it would be great wedding we pray and uh as Haley and joshua get ready for that you just bless that i pray pray lord also lord, you bless our church god that you just uh bless us with building space god you open that door lord god whether building space or build a building you'd open the right doors and that we'd help sort of continue to grow that we would start seeing people getting baptized and growing and coming back and, and wanting to grow lord that you'd put that desire in their hearts and their lives god we pray that you bless the different people that are going out at different times lord god with the with the gospel lord god with tracks you bless the open sky ministry bless that lord god and we thank you god uh, for your goodness lord, your love lord we pray that you provide the needs for that lord that you just uh continue to bless that we pray and we're praying the father for bismarck will and sally and others lord god that you just help work in a special way within their hearts and their lives god and those that are around them i pray lord also that you be with uh uh, Aunt Glenda, God, you, uh, you just hedge her up and give her health, Lord. Help her, Lord, with her back pain, with her cancer, God, we pray. Pray for uh, Dave Scott, congestive fail heart failure, God, that you just give him grace and strength and the help he needs uh, with his uh, insurance and all that. I pray in the Father for Pastor Nolan, Lord God, that he'd remain cancer-free, God. You just help, Lord, that uh, his, uh, uh, what he's going through right now, Lord God, you give him energy and strength and it would continue to do well as it has. I uh, thank you, God, for that. Thank you, God, for... Uh, we thank you, God, for that treatment that he's going through, Lord. That that was such a blessing to be able to come across that, that he did. I pray that you'd be with Carol Brown. Pray, pray the Father, that you just work through in a special way within her life, God, for salvation. I pray the Father for uh, Heather's daughters, God. We pray for uh, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Jesus, Lord, for her daughters, God, that they would uh, come to know you as Savior, Lord, that you just work through in a special way with Julicia and Cheyenne. You just work through in a special way. Pray for brother. I pray for my God. I pray for Heather's husband, Mike, uh, Darla's father. I pray that he would come to church, God, that you'd work through in a special way. I pray in the Father for Darla and Joyce God, Goff, and God, that you just give them grace and strength. And I pray for your healing hand upon uh, Joyce and, and the different things that they, they got going on with their, their, their health. I pray that you'd restore their health, encourage them, strengthen them. I pray for Nathan Benton. We pray that you just give them a – Lord, uh, I pray that you just help him and Teresa, Lord, with their decision concerning chemo. And we pray for your healing there. We do pray for your grace and strength as they go through this, Lord. Pray for Lou and Millie, God, that you just hedge them up, strengthen them. Maria, uh, Maria, that you'd help her, Lord, with her kidney dialysis, encourage her, strengthen her. Pray for Fadita, who's still in the Philippines, God, and just give her grace, give her strength. And Mike also, Lord, as he's here, Lord God, that you just bless him. And just pray that you just help, Lord God, that you give her the opportunity to uh, witness and give out the gospel. I pray for Karen, Tom, and Mary. Pray for your hedge of protection upon their uh, health that they would get better, I pray. Uh, I pray for also, Lord, for Megan, God, that you'd hedge her up and with her concerning her health, that you'd encourage her and help her, Lord, I pray for Vicki, who's uh, going to be moving here soon, that you just work through in a special way. I pray for Leonard, God, that you'd come to church, God, that you'd just work through in a special way and you'd do work in his heart and life. I pray for Paul, who's in hospice, God, that you would just pray for your will, Lord, concerning him, Lord God. We know, Lord, that uh, uh, you, you know 
what's going on. We just pray that you just help Kim through this process and the, and the family, that you'd give, give them the uh, direction and guidance with this, and you'd give them grace as they go through this. Pray for Brady Ecker. We pray for his cancer, God, concerning your healing. We pray to that end. I pray for uh, Jeannie, uh, who hasn't talked to her dad for 20 years, maybe. I just pray that you just help, Lord, give her grace and strength. I pray that she'd mend those uh, those uh, those relationships there, and you'd work there in a special way. I pray for Jeff, God, you just encourage him, strengthen him, help, Lord, with his mind, and you just bring him in, uh, in a safe place, I pray. I pray on the Father, Lord, also, Lord, for... Um, I pray on the Father for Andolini uh, concerning this bone cancer, uh, this this young uh, boy, Lord God. We pray that you just give uh, grace and strength, most of all for salvation. And we pray also, Lord, for his for healing. Pray that you'd work there in a special way within this little boy's life. And we pray that you just be with the parents and, and the family and all that. I pray on the Father, Lord, also Lord, for uh, Russ, Lord, concerning his sickness. And we pray for his salvation, most of all. But we pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, to give them the doctor's wisdom, Lord, if he's going to the doctor, and you'd help him with his sickness. I pray for Sherry, that you'd come to church. I pray for Mackenzie concerning the, uh, her pregnancy, God. You just help, Lord, that you just, uh, I pray that you just give her the health, a healthy pregnancy, God, and you just give her some direction, God, from a doctor. And I pray that everything would turn out just fine. I pray, I pray for Angel's grandpa for his salvation. I pray for uh, Nancy and Sebastian for their salvation, that you'd work there in a special way. Barbara's uh, sister. I pray for Justina, Lord, that you help Lord, with her schedule, and you just work there in a special way. And I pray for Jerry and Jolene for their kids, for their salvation, that you just work there in a special way. For Zach, that you just help them come back to you. I pray for Stephen also, Lord, that you just work there in a special way in his life, God. I pray that you just work. Uh, Lord, I pray for Mike, that uh, he would come to church, God, Heather's husband, Lord, that you just work there in a special way. And God, I pray for the unspoken request, Norma and others, Lord God. We thank you, God, for how you work in our church. We lift up these different prayer requests before you, and we just pray that you just do a special work within uh, our new converts, within our church, God. We thank you for uh, the uh, discipleship class being finished. We This this route or this, this uh, group of discipleship class that we've had, we thank you, God, for the great turnout for that. And we thank you, God, for the last Sunday of that, which last Sunday. And pray that you just bless our future ones, we pray. Pray that you be with uh, those that will continue on, that they would continue to grow in your grace and strength. Be with our, uh, President Biden and Jill. We pray for their salvation. Pray for their uh, him and his administration. You give them wisdom and discernment and direction, guidance, and the decisions they need to make today and this week, God. Be with Kamala Harris and Doug. We pray for salvation for them. Pray that you be with our, uh, those that are in Congress, Senate, our judges, that you bless them and their spouses and their families with salvation. Pray that you give them wisdom and discernment and direction, guidance, and the decisions they need to make, God. You just help them, Lord, to make right decisions, biblical decisions. I pray that you just help guide them and help them, Lord, to do the right thing for the American people. Lord, we pray. I pray for our military, where they be around the world. Lord God, watch over and protect them and bless them. I pray that you'd hedge your protection, uh, uh, hedge your protection be upon them. And, of course, Israel also, Lord, we pray. I pray that they would make right cho choices, good choices, and honorable choices. I do lift up also, Lord, Bible Baptist Church and Puyallup. We pray that you just hedge them up, I pray, in this uh, very important time for them to get the right pastor. We pray that you just uh, open the door for the right pastor. Lord, we know, Lord, that you're in control. And we just pray that you just work in a special way, Lord God, that you bring about the right pastor and that you'd fulfill that. And, God, that you would just strengthen that church, we pray, that you would just allow, Lord, to have the right leadership and that uh, you'd bless the men, the pulpit committee, and give them the wisdom that they need and the direction and bless pastor as he gets involved. And, the Lord, he doesn't want to get involved too much. But we pray that you just uh, align all these things up, we pray. We do lift them up in prayer. Pray that you bind Saint from that church, God, and you just hedge up the, uh, the, uh, the church and the people there. And, God, I just pray that you just work in a special way, we pray. I pray in the Father, Lord Jesus, also, Lord, that you be with our... Uh, Open Sky Ministry, once again, I just pray that you'd hedge it up, bless it, uh, bless those that are being ministered to. I pray that you'd work in a mighty way. We thank you, God, for all your goodness, Lord, your love, Lord God. I pray for our missionaries, God, uh, that you'd be with each and every one of them, Lord God. And uh, we pray that you just meet their needs, Lord God, as they represent families and maybe even couples or, or even individuals. I pray that you'd bring people alongside of them, that you'd help them, Lord, to be able to uh, accomplish the uh, ability of getting out the gospel. You'd equip them and strengthen them and bless them, meet the needs that they have, and give them, Lord God, more and more people to, that would be saved, Lord God. I pray that they, as they put out the effort, that you'd reward that effort and that you'd bless them and keep them safe and bless them and meet their needs. Thank you, God, for all that you're doing. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of that as far as missions is concerned. 
I pray that you just bless Bible Baptist Church that we'd be able to spiritually grow, and that we would also Lord, be able to uh, numerically grow, that we'd become, uh, yeah, larger. But Lord, I just pray that you'd bring, I pray that we would lift you up, Lord Jesus, and that you draw men up to yourself, the right people. Lord, we thank you, God, for Bible Baptist Church. Thank you for all that you've done for us in going to the cross and dying for our sins. And thank you, God, as you were laid in a tomb, we thank you, God, that you did that for us. And then you rose again the third day. We thank you, God, for the gospel. Help us, Lord, to be faithful with the gospel and bless our missionaries, bless the work of Bible Baptist Church that we'd be able to uh, accomplish um, what you've, the mandate you've set before us. And uh, just pray that you strengthen each and every one of us as we uh, go about doing these things, we pray. And just pray all these things, and we pray this, and pray that you bless our missions letter coming up here, we pray. Praise in Jesus' name. Amen. missionary letter tonight is from Jacob and Elizabeth Ray and they are missionaries through Zambia. Dear friends, it's been a very full first month in Mongu. Our bus ride here was long but mostly uneventful. This is with the expectation of one delay for a flat tire and a leak in the roof above us during a rainstorm. The scenery was beautiful and we arrived in Mongu safely. Several of the men from church were waiting at the bus station to greet us when we arrived. What a happy reunion we had. Despite our exhaustion, the evening held so much joy and laughter as we caught up after months apart from the brethren. We were greatly encouraged by our first Sunday back. It was such a blessing to see men and women we worked with last spring, but also so exciting to meet new faces that started attending while we were in the States. It truly shows us that this is the work of the Lord. He held this group together and even added visitors to it without our physical presence. During the month of January, Darren taught a four-week Sunday school series on salvation, while the second services focused on the doctrine of the church. It is very common for someone to begin attending and then state that they are a member without any understanding of the function or purpose of a local church, let alone the requirements of church membership. First and foremost, each one must come to an understanding of their need for the Savior. And this was highlighted in every message. We pray that this teaching was clearly understood by each in attendance. We have seen so much growth through personal Bible studies this past month. Michael was saved in the spring of 2022 and has been very involved in the ministry since that time. This month, he stated that it was time to become more serious about studying the Word and arrange the hours his shop is open so that he could schedule to meet individually three times a week. We have been focusing on how to study the Bible as we work through the book of John. Often, Justin comes with him, and Justin is a school teacher by profession, works as one of our church interpreters, and walks nearly two hours to come to church or Bible studies. We are thankful for the faithfulness of these men and their eagerness to understand the word of God. Elizabeth has had the opportunity to work with a large number of youth in the neighborhood. Sunday school classes have quickly grown to more than 20 children, and a few teenage girls in the neighborhood have asked to meet regularly at the house. Bible studies with the girls primarily focus on salvation, and it has led to well-thought-out questions. So please pray that each would respond to the gospel as they think on what is taught. Less than one week after arriving in Mongu, our home was broken into and a few items were stolen while we slept, including the TV that the church had used for live streams and a backpack containing a passport and a sentimental Bible. Since then, we had taken some additional steps to secure the premises and overall are thankful that it was, not, it was a non-violent burglary. We have prayed that the thief would read the Bible he took and that God would use this to draw him to himself. We also begin praying that the passport would be returned. Only a week after the theft, a man called stating his son had found the passport on the side of a road about a mile away. Praise the Lord for this answer to prayer, saving us a trip to the embassy in Lusaka. The landlord has allowed the church to continue meeting in our home for an additional few months while we search out a better meeting location. A school classroom would be the most ideal, but schools have been closed nationwide for several weeks due to cholera outbreak. 
While there have been less than 30 cholera cases in Western Province in the last four months, the nation as a whole has seen over 17,000 cases and over 600 deaths since October. This is the worst outbreak Zambia has seen in the last 20 years. Schools are scheduled to reopen on February 12th, and we hope that the disease can be controlled and that we would be able to secure a new meeting location soon. This past week, Darren returned to Lusaka for his last week in Zambia before going home to Idaho. It was a blessing to have his help in Mongu with music, teaching, studying, and town errands. We appreciated the fellowship and encouragement and know that he will be missed in all, by all in the church. We are left with one week to prepare before the house is full again with our next two missions teams, representing three churches across Canada. We have two more American teams scheduled in March and April. Please pray for open hearts and useful vessels as most of these teams will focus heavily on street evangelism. We would also appreciate prayer for logistics as we coordinate lodging for the larger teams, working to establish a mission storm that will be used frequently. We thank the Lord for the many laborers partnering with us on the field this year. Your prayers have been so evident as God strengthened us and provided grace through these weeks of adjustment and busyness. Thank you so much for your support as you partner with us in this ministry. Reaching Zambia for Christ, Jacob and Elizabeth Ray. Well, amen. Yeah, I remember Brother Ray's dad when he pastored there in Prosser. Or was it somewhere over there? Prosser over there in the eastern Washington over there in the Tri-Cities area. If you've ever been over there, you have somewhat of an idea what I'm talking about. Well, it's good to see a few uh, bodies out there among all the sea of empty chairs. Mm, an ocean of empty chairs. <laughs> well, take your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We finally moved into chapter 3. And chapter 3 and chapter 4 somewhat carry along with the same theme, dealing with um, <clears throat> those who are fully yielded to the life of the Lord Jesus Christ and and the uh, rewards that will be uh, given to them as they continue to yield their lives. Last time we met, we finished up with uh, chapter 2. As we got into chapter 2, dealing with uh, six different areas there that I outlined for you in review. But because of time, we won't go into the review of what we talked about last week. We'll just continue on with our lesson for tonight as Paul in chapters 3 and 4 deal with the ministry of the gospel and how God's people looked at those ministers uh, as uh, men of uh, renown, uh, somewhat deifying them in ways uh, that uh, sometimes uh, we see today, where if you pastor a church running two or three thousand, uh, you are the man, and nobody can speak better than you. They speak in all the main conferences, all the men's meetings, and everywhere you go, well, there they are, as though there are no other preachers out there that could ever preach like that preacher. <laughs> And sometimes it gives you the idea that they've somewhat deified that person. You have to be careful of that. And then the, and there are those that uh, defy the preachers. And some of that was going on there at the church at Corinth. And you have to be careful about that kind of attitude. And so, as we get into chapters uh, 3 and 4, we deal with six different areas of discussion as we talk about the servant and the siblings that never grow beyond being a sibling. That's <laughs> uh, a bunch of siblings there in the church that just remain siblings. And then we want to talk about the sower and the seed of God and so forth. You can see the outline there and what we're going to be discussing over the next uh, couple weeks or so, however long it takes to get through those 
different areas of discussion as we move through chapters 3 and 4. I'm anxious to get to our study tonight from verses 1 through 6 as we look at the servant of Christ and the siblings of Christ. And there we understand by the Apostle Paul that he brings out a couple major problems. We could call these core problems there at the church of Corinth, dealing with the carnality and dealing with how they viewed ministers. So with that being said, why don't we stand and give reverence to the reading of God's Holy Scripture, and then we will go right into our study for tonight. That we can get you out maybe five minutes earlier than we have in the past. So, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you. I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with the meat or with me, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and division, are you not carnal, walk as men? For, one, for while one saith, I am of Paul, another I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted and Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Father, bless uh, our time tonight as we look to this passage of scripture that we just read, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. So as you're being seated, we see that the core problem of carnality that was there at the church was a result of several contributing factors. Actually, not several, we might as well <clears throat> narrow it down to two, but I could probably, if I gave it more thought, could come up with more than two. But we see, first of all, <coughs> that it was because they were dull of hearing. Uh, immaturity is, as we see from Hebrews chapter 5, and those that never grow, those that remain siblings, those that uh, are babes and those that are referred to as a result of being babes because they are carnal are maybe as a result of their carnality, they remain babes, is because uh, they're dull of hearing. As you notice there in Hebrews chapter 5, uh, and that's why we understand that when we study any portion of Scripture, it's good to compare Scripture with Scripture as we begin to dig into the meaning of the passage that we're reading, like what we're reading right here where he says in 1 Corinthians, I fed you with milk and not with meat. Why? Because you're not able to bear it. Why are you not able to bear it? Because you're carnal. Well, why are you so carnal? because you're dull of hearing. But in order to get to the dull of hearing, we have to go a little here and a little there. Study to show thyself approved unto God, workmen that needeth not to be ashamed. But how do we do that? By rightly dividing the word of truth. And when we rightly divide the word of truth, even though we're going expositorily, we take to those passages that give reference <clears throat> to something that other passages give reference to, and we put it all together, and we get a much larger view of what God's talking about. Do you understand that? 
Like if we were going to study prayer, we just wouldn't study one passage. We'd study several passages, and then we'd find out there are many aspects to prayer. Well, we find out there are several reasons why people are not growing in the Lord. And we find over here in Hebrews that they're not growing in the Lord because they're dull of hearing. Notice in verse number 11 and 14 through 11, verse number 11 through verse number 14, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing that ye are dull of hearing. Well, he had many things to say. There's so much in the Bible that <clears throat> that is very frustrating uh, to try to share with people that are dull of hearing. And you think, well, you know, these these are believers. They trusted Christ as their Savior. Uh, but where are they? Well, because they're they're lazy. That's what dull of hearing is in reference to. They're just lazy about the things of God. They're not really that interested in it. They're not motivated enough to be energized to do what you have to do to be a good student of God's Word. They're not willing to spend time in church. They're not willing to spend time. If you spend time in your Bible, then you'll be more interested in church because you think, well, I need to get in church so I can get a better understanding of all this. Because evidently, <coughs> there's more people there that understand this maybe better than I do. And so, uh, and there's a preacher there that God has called. We'll talk more about that later. And that has devoted his life to the Word of God. Uh, and he's given his life full time to the study of God's word. As doctors give themselves to the study of medicine, he gave himself to the study of God's word. So evidently, since he spends more time in the Bible because he has the ability to do that, since he has devoted his life to the word of God, since I've devoted my life to uh, taking care of my family and doing other things, so... Uh, well, I'm sure he's got something more that he can offer. So, I mean, I should be willing to go and listen to what he has to say. And so, <clears throat> when you're dull of hearing and you're lazy and you, don't could, you could care less about what the Bible has to say, and yet uh, you got the milk of God's word, and that's all you're interested in. I'll come Sunday morning. I want to hear the gospel. I love to hear the gospel message. But that's all I'm interested in here. Notice in verse number 12 of Hebrews 5, he says, For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again and again and again which is the first principles of the oracles of God that become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. For every one that uh, useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a what class? But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You see, <clears throat> those that are lazy are not going to study God's Word. They're not going to come out to a Wednesday night Bible study. They're not going to come out to a Sunday afternoon men's Bible study. They're not going to take time to get involved in their own personal home Bible study. Uh, but they will study football and baseball, and they'll know all the, all the stats of the various teams that are in the NFL and who is the most favored to 
make it to the Super Bowl. Oh, they know all about that, but they don't know anything about the apostles or the prophets. You, know, you ask them, who are the major prophets and who are the minor prophets? And uh, <laughs> uh, which came first, Ezekiel or Isaiah? Well, let me think about that. What is Ezekiel's major prophecy dealing with? What is uh, the greatest chapter of Isaiah that the Jews seem to totally reject? I have no idea. Where in Matthew's gospel does he speak about the discourse of the end time? I have no idea. What uh, chapters in the book of Revelation does he give the message to the seven churches? Oh, let me think about that. What chapter in Revelation does he speak about Israel and the Antichrist coming down from heaven and he's out to destroy Israel, but God protects Israel? Yeah. Now, as we study God's word, those all become familiar to us. We, uh, yeah, I know that one. I know that one. What chapter in the book of Genesis does God make promise to Abraham? And God promises all that will bless Abraham and his seed that they will be blessed. Well, I know that one. Yeah, it, it's just, you know, the more you study God's word, the more familiar you become, you come to understand uh, various important things of the Bible that, um, that benefit us. But those that are dull of hearing, they're lazy, and they could care less. Well, what does that tell you? Well, that just tells me that their interest is in something other than the Lord. I don't mean to sound negative <laughs> or sarcastic. I just, I'm just telling you how I feel and the way I see it and the way I understand it. And then that's the way it is because that's the way the Bible says it is. And you say, well, I'm offended. Well, then you're offended at God's word. If uh, you're not interested in the word of God, well, then there you are. Dole of hearing. But I realize I'm speaking to those that are not see yet. <laughs> those that are not out there. Uh, they're somewhere, but they're not there. Those are the empty chairs. Mm, but... Thank the Lord they show up on Sunday morning. It does encourage my heart to see the place full on Sunday morning. But how exciting it would be to come in here Sunday night and Wednesday night and see it packed out all the services. Does that exist anywhere? I've been in a few churches where that has existed. Now, we've been in some churches on vacation where we walk in a, on a Wednesday night and their, their auditorium's almost full. And, you know, that, what does that say about that church? And then you find out that on Sunday morning, they have two or three services, and that's why the auditorium is full on Wednesday night, but praise the Lord anyway. Well, let's move on. So they're lazy to study God's word. The Bible says we have to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Well, if you're not willing to study, then how can you show yourself approved unto God? Amen. And then, <clears throat> since they don't study, they're not able to do what? They're not able to exercise their senses so that they can discern between the good and the evil. This is so evident in our churches today. That's why we have all these different organizations out there. 
uh, that uh, are parachurch organizations and church organizations uh, that support the GLGBTQ movement, that support, you know, the right to abortion, uh, that support all the, the things out there that the liberal agenda supports. And, and they call themselves Christians. And maybe, maybe I'm, I'm sure many of them are saved. They're bathed, but they've never grown beyond the milk of God's word. They can't handle the meat of God's word. The meat of God's word, they choke on it. They get sick, they spit it out. Amen. Amen. Uh, am I relating? But, oh, we shouldn't judge them. And they go to the polls and they vote for the liberals. They stand for the liberal agenda. They have no problem with what goes on out there. They feel like, well, they're, they, you know, they have rights. Yeah, they have the right to get into our public schools. They have the right now to train your children uh, they have the right to influence your children. You have no rights to say anything about it. This is what happens with the attitude. Well, they have the right. They have the right to take away from you your right and your voice. Because you never exercise your right. And so your right has been diminished as... They uh, move to the left. The church moves to the left. The world just continues to move further to the left. And just a handful of people are standing out there at the right, and they're just a bunch of fanatics anymore. Well, as we move along, we find out that <coughs> the second reason is that there are they're like this is because they walk as men. <laughs> That's what Paul said. For you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? Well, what does he mean to walk as men? Aren't we all men? Aren't we all a part of the human race that make up a, a world of men and women? What does he mean to walk as men? Well, he means to walk as the world walks. To walk as men as to be conformed to what the the men of this world are conformed to. And what are they conformed to? Well, they're conformed to this world. And you see, as newborn Christians, we have to grow to the place to where we understand that we're no longer to be conformed to this world. You know, we got churches out there today that are conformed to the world. The conformity of... Uh, uh, of their services, uh, just like anything else that you might go into that's worldly. They got the worldly music with the lyrics of Jesus to it. And yet, I mean, uh, there's no harmony, there's no melody, everything is just beat. The drums are beating. I mean, it's just a loud, loud noise screaming and yelling. Well, they have, they have these rock Christian bands that get up there just like these crazy rock musicians. I don't know why they call them musicians. Uh, there's nothing. Uh, there's, uh, I'm thinking, what kind of talent is that? <laughs> and they get up there banging on the piano, making no music at all, just noise strumming their guitars and just stringing out nothing but noise, screaming at the top of their voices, and then taking their guitars and smashing them. 
over the podium. And so now we have the thing, same thing going on in our churches. And people, oh, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> They come dressed, you know, just like the world dresses. Women with tattoos all over their body, men with tattoos all over their bodies, uh, piercings all over their body, and, you know, and, and this new form of Christianity. Your body is created in God's image and God's likeness. And if God wanted you to mark your body, he would have said it was okay. Where God says not to tattoo your body. The only time your body was pierced is if you were a slave. Pierced their ear. And that was a mark of slavery. They would pierce their nose and put a ring in their nose and chain their nose and haul them off to a place of bondage. And you thought, well, you know, that's, and we have that today. <laughs> you look at some of these people and you think that uh, there was an explosion. They got metal stuck all over their body. What happened to them? But it's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's got Jesus all over it, and then it's okay. Well, that's the world for you. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. And the Bible talks about the fashion of this world. It's all going to fade away, by the way. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. How? Well, how do you renew your mind? You renew your mind through the word of God. The renewing of your mind. What? So that you can prove what is good and what is acceptable and what is perfect will of God is. But how can you do that when you can't even discern you can't even exercise your senses to discern between the evil and good, and you're going to prove what that perfect will of God is? Well, you're going to have to stop being conformed to this world. Well, that means you're going to have to grow up. Carnal believers are unable to do these things because they're not willing to live according to the will of God. If you're not willing to live by the will of God, well, then you're not able to conform. Then to conform, you've got to be interested in finding out what the will of God is. And how do you find out what the will of God is? Amen. By being eager to know what the Bible says. You want to learn more about God and his righteousness and his holiness and, and, and how beautiful my salvation is and how beautiful my salvation is preserved. You see, to walk as men is to love the things of this world. But what does God say in 1 John 2, 15? Love not the world, neither the things which are in the world. You see, if any man loved the world, the Bible says the love of the Father is not in him. To love the world is to live your life for the things of this world. <laughs> I get amazed at people in their 70s and their 80s and their 90s still living for the things of this world when they're just one step away <coughs> to the grave, you know. You know, why am I so interested in these things? I, I'm not going to hold on to them very long. I'm not, I, perhaps I need to start thinking about the things that are eternal. Amen. Well, it could be that they walk as men as to walk in envying and strife and in division. You see, this old world is a world that is filled with violence. 
It's a world that is constantly at war. It's a world that uh, there will never be peace until the Prince of Peace comes. And it should be when we go into the house of God, it should be a refuge from the world. And how sad it is when we go into a church house and it's just like the world is full of envy and strife and division. And they're just like the piranhas out there in the world. They're biting and devouring one another. Right now, the world is at war with one another, but soon they will be at war when the Lord comes against him, and the Lord will just simply speak, and that's the end of that war. Well, if you want to be on the winning side, you better get on the side of Jesus and become interested in the things of Jesus. You see, <clears throat> to walk in envy and strife and division as you bite and devour one another is to be in that category that is written of Paul in Galatians where they walk in the flesh. You, if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consume one another. And he goes on to say through verse number 16 through 17, to do so is to walk in the flesh rather than in the spirit. Yeah, when there's division, when there's strife, when there's envy in the church, then that's when they are in the flesh. And we don't need that. We, we need to be in the spirit. We need to be walking in the spirit. So <clears throat> they were carnal for those reasons, and they were carnal in what they understood about the ministers. They were either deifying them or defying them. They were exalting them as gods or they were criticizing them as nothing more than men that were not servants of God. And so Paul gets into an interesting discussion here. He says, while one saith, I am of Paul, another, I am of Paulus, he goes on to say, are you not carnal? So you're carnal as babes, and you're carnal the way you understand what ministers are. The question is asked, who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? And he continues with the question, but ministers by whom you believe? Even as the Lord gave to every man, notice that's a question. And he goes on to say, I have planted, Apollos watered, but who was it that gave the increase? It was God. Well, what's he talking about there? Is it, you're, you're looking at these men that, that, that brought these people to the Lord, that brought you to the Lord, and you're, you're saying, well, I was saved by Paul. Well, I was saved by Apollos. Well, who are you trusting in? Amen. Who, who are you believing that was that saved you? So, so he first asked, who then is Paul and who is Apollos? He's giving them the understanding of his calling to them as a spiritual minister. Paul and Apollos and all who are called to preach the word are servants of God to give out the word of God. Well, if they're to be servants of God, then they better know something about God. And in no way is he demeaning what a minister is. 
We need to understand a minister is a servant. I'm to be your servant, but I'm your servant for God. And if I'm your servant for God, that doesn't mean that, uh, that I'm to be over there cleaning your house or I'm to be over there mowing your lawn or it should be my responsibility. If you have a leaky roof, to be over there repairing that roof. No, it means that I, as a servant of God, is to make sure that I feed you spiritually. That's the whole idea. You see, the early New Testament church ministers understood what their spiritual ministry was. It was not to serve tables. It wasn't to do all the custodian work in the church plus prepare a Sunday's message. Uh, it wasn't to wait on the widows. But what was it? Well, we're told in Acts chapter 6, verse number 3 and 4, that they would look among them seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, who we may appoint over the business that I just spoke about. And it wasn't the deacon's responsibility to go out there and do all those things. It was their responsibility to make sure they got done. But what was the minister's responsibility? That we give ourselves, what's the word there? Continually, Continually to what? Yeah. And what else? You see, if you show up on Sunday morning and I'm not feeding you, then evidently I have not been doing what I should be doing. You see, it's the preacher's job to make sure he spends time continually praying and studying. Uh, if, if I, <laughs> I mean, it's shameful when a pastor knows less than his people knows. They're working eight-hour-a-day uh, jobs, 40 days a week, and they know more about the Bible than he does because uh, he uh, evidently hasn't continually been spending time in the Word of God. If I'm going to stand up here and preach to you from Isaiah chapter 1, I should know everything about every verse of that chapter because, after all, I should have been continually studying that. And so... <clears throat> As we understand what's the word there, the ministry. You see, what's ministry? The service of the word. See, a pastor is to be the minister of the word. Sometimes we forget that. Well, your job is to marry and to bury. <laughs> That's what I was told by someone once. Well, my job's a lot more than to marry and to bury. <clears throat> You know, Paul charged Timothy to do what? Paul charged Timothy to preach the word, to be instant in season and out of season, to, repute, to reprove and to re exhort and to rebuke with all long suffering. Oh, he said the time will come when they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And oh yeah, they will. Many will turn to fables and to lies. So you better know your Bible, because they're going to be the liars and the and the fable tellers. You know, uh, the fables. Uh, there are fables out there. Oh yeah, I was in a cave, and this angel came down as in a shining, glorious white robe. His name was Moroni. And he left me these big old glasses. And he left me this book called the Book of Moroni. And I could not read it until I put on the glasses. Before I put on the glasses, it was just all hieroglyphics. But once I put on the glasses, I could read it. 
but only I could read it. And so I had my dear brothers in another room with a curtain. They couldn't see because no one could see this book except for me. And I read it, and they wrote it down. And then the angel Moroni, I, once I wrote it all down, the angel came down and took it away, and it's back in heaven. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're going to come with their fables. That's a fable. And see, it's up to the pastor uh, to be able to warn you and show you that's just all lies. And God is not a polytheistic God. He is monotheistic. I want to show you what the Bible says. He's from everlasting to everlasting. Oh, yeah, they're, they're out there. You know, say, same thing with Islam. You know, we have the same thing going on there. The angel Gabriel came down and met with Muhammad outside of a cave. All this happens. There's always a cave somewhere nearby. You know, he was out there trashing the people as they were, the nomads were traveling through Mecca and other places. And, oh, he was a mighty warrior and, you know. <laughs> going around robbing people and stealing and killing, and then suddenly he becomes a wonderful prophet. Never performed any miracles, never did anything, but look at the follower, the following that he has. And so, yes, the, the, the book of Quran, it's, it's, it has nothing to do with Almighty God. Allah if you study out Allah, you'll find it all. And, and their whole basis of their faith is based on the lunar calendar and the moon. Goes all the way back to the days of Nimrod and his wife. We won't go there. That's a whole different discussion. But anyway. <laughs> so, so the question is asked. By whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? Well, what's he talking about there? Even as the Lord gave to every man. So Paul asked the question, who was it that gave you us as ministers to reach you with the gospel? And to serve you with the word of God. Who was it that gave us you? You see, Paul is very bold to say, I am God's minister. Now, either I'm called of God or I'm not called of God. If I tell you I'm called of God, and you say, well, I don't believe that. I don't believe you're no more a man of God than we are. And then you're saying that God didn't call me. Now, what's the interesting thing is that I didn't want to be called of God. <laughs> and when it came to my mind that God was calling me, uh, I thought, well, no, this is ridiculous. God could never use me. And it just got stuck in my head. And I thought, well, why am I, what am I even thinking this? I could never do that. I was, I was very nervous just to give my testimony on a Sunday night. I'd sit there and half, I mean, half scared to death that if I opened my mouth, I would stutter and stumble and everyone would start laughing at me. So I just didn't want to say anything. But then... Well, I'll try my best. First time I got up to preach, I was shaking, couldn't even hardly hold my Bible. And I was preaching to children. <laughs> you know, hey, that's, and yet that the Lord says, I'm calling you. Are you sure? God um, evidently knows me better than me. And so if that be the case, then, uh, then every preacher that's called of God is God's anointed. 
And we have people today that attack preachers. Uh, they have no respect for them. You know, it used to be a time where if you were a pastor, uh, even the lost people would acknowledge you as a pastor. You walk into a bank, uh, good morning, Pastor Nolan. Not anymore. Well, that's just the direction the world is going in. And so Paul says, I have planted, Apollos is watered, but God gave the increase. You see, God gives the increase as he uses us, but it is God that does it. God has called every one of us to be a witness, but God has called those that he wants to shepherd over his flock. God has called them with a special calling. It's the anointing of God. And uh, God makes it very clear that once they are anointed of God uh, to shepherd over God's people, uh, that they must give an account to God when they stand before the Lord for the people of God. And uh, they better make sure that they have preached the word of God to them. And if they have preached the word of God to them and the preacher can stand up there before his heavenly father and say, yes, heavenly father, I have preached all of your counsel to them. And he says, all right, then give an account as to why they did not obey. And I have to say, well, because they were dull of hearing. That will not be good for you. You say, well, where is that found in the Bible? Well, it's found in Hebrews chapter 13. And, um, well, we'll just take a moment and look at that since I see a couple eyebrows rising. <laughs> but there in Hebrews, he says in verse number 7, Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow concerning the end of their conversation. What does that mean? <laughs> it means concerning the outcome of your conduct. That's what it means. Now look at what he says in verse number 13. Or pardon me. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> oh, what do I? Verse number 17. So therefore obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. You see, a preacher who is truly anointed of God, one who has been called to preach God's word, one who is faithfully studying God's word, who sees the fruit from God's word as God gives the increase, as he goes out and as he plants churches or he takes a church that's already been planted because one plants and one waters and God gives the increase, and then the minister comes along, as Paul was doing. He ministered there for some 18 months at one at Corinth, and then he moved along to another church uh, as he planted there, and then he would turn that over to another minister. Well, he was making it very clear to those that were deifying him and deifying the ministers that were left there to serve that don't you deify us. Don't you exalt us. We're just God's ministers preaching God's word. It is God that gives the increase. It is the, it is the Lord that, that has saved you. They're only out there preaching the message that brings about your salvation. But it's God that gives the increase. 
But then on the other hand, he would have you to understand that they are ministers of God. And as ministers of God, we should see some results. We don't go around boasting ourselves because we were able to build up a congregation. And now that congregation, they're out there watering the seed that was planted. And all of a sudden, a great increase comes. And we see that happening all across America today. Because a, a preacher goes to a church running or a city running uh, seven, eight million in population. He builds a congregation of two or three thousand people. He's preaching conferences all over the country where you got this little church that's only running a hundred or so in a t city of 4,000 or maybe 40,000. And uh, those preachers are unheard of. Well, we're doing the same thing as what they were doing. <laughs> we have to be careful not to do that. And then uh, we have others that say, oh, I can't wait to hear this preacher or that preacher. There are preachers out there that could preach the socks off some of these conference preachers that you have never heard. But I, I've, <laughs> in the state of Washington, we would uh, always make sure to preach every preacher that came to a preacher's meeting. Everyone had the opportunity to preach it. Some of those preachers in little old churches running, oh, maybe 20 or 30 people could out-preach the socks out of most of us or preach the socks off. <laughs> My goodness. Someone would say, you know, he needs to be where you're at, Brother Nolan. <laughs> no, he's where God put him. Because, you know, God cares for an increase everywhere. And God cares for the souls that are everywhere. And it's important that we understand that, um, that it's God's calling in every one of our lives. Uh, that is what makes us responsible to God. And we don't exalt one calling above another calling. A pastor should never be exalted above any other calling. Uh, the calling of a Sunday school teacher or a bus worker or, or someone that can do nothing more than just be involved in a prayer ministry. And that's what they feel God's called them to do. If that's what God's called them to do, every one of those callings are important because as we all work together, what are we doing? We're watering that seed that has been planted. The church working together to do only what God can bring a result to. We take the word of God, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, out to a lost world, and we plant it by door knocking, we plant it by witnessing uh, to those out there on the streets, and eventually we start seeing an increase, and we give God all the praise because it is the Lord that is doing the work. I can't convict them. It wasn't me that invented the gospel. It wasn't me that died for their sins. It was the Lord Jesus Christ. And so every one of us can have a part in it. And none of us should ever lift up anyone else above any other person. Yes, respect the office, but only the office. Because we're all the same. We're flesh and we're frail. And sometimes we can be very weak. Heavenly Father, again, thank you for your word. We ask that we would, as the Apostle Paul uh, gave uh, us the understanding that, that every one of us are a result of the work of the ministry. And every one of us are built up for the edifying of the body of Christ. 
So we ask, Lord, that uh, we henceforth would be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, but that we would be faithful uh, to study your word. And I, as the pastor of this church, would be faithful uh, to give myself to the study of your word. For we ask this in Jesus' name, and all God's people say it. Well, for some reason, I couldn't get you out five minutes early, but we'll try. We'll do better next week, maybe. <laughs>